Welcome to That's Good Sports. I'm Brandon. I once aligned in America for freedom, Perna. Nobody aligned with me, and my freedom was taken away by a mortgage and car payments, but I tried. After one weekend of AAF football, all I have to say to the NFL is suck it! Suck it! I forgot how nice it was to see quarterbacks getting hit without a little yellow graphic popping up in the corner saying flag. And there's no way the NFL doesn't notice the viral success of the hit on Mike Bergovici that popped his helmet off like I'm sure Buzz Aldrin wanted to do to Neil Armstrong on the moon. That's right, we fans want to see good quarterback play, and then we want to see those quarterbacks get hit so hard they don't know what league they're playing in. The AAF isn't designed to actually compete with the NFL, but maybe, just maybe, the NFL will notice fans want this, and not BS flags for roughing the passer, ruining Super Bowls. Let's review all of the games from opening AAF weekend and hand out some big dick player awards to the guys trying to get back into the big leagues. Let's get sports. Please, if you're new to this channel, subscribe. And if you're already subscribed, I would appreciate you clicking the notification button so YouTube doesn't make me obsolete. This episode is sponsored by Vincero Watches. Watches so nice, I bought them thrice. Two for me and one for my wife. Yeah, I'm wearing my wife's watch. She's out of town. Who doesn't try on their wife's things when they're out of town? Anyway, this is going to be your Valentine's Day gift, so don't tell her. Uh, if you want to get your lady friend a gift, that stands out this week. Vincero has tons of options for you to choose from. Or maybe you just want to be selfish and buy yourself a luxury timepiece. I have the Chrono S matte black watch and the Bellwether silver and white watch. I wear the Bellwether when I am sailing my yacht via my imagination. Unlike my given name, which means loser, Vincero means I will win. If you're looking for unique watches that don't have a cookie cutter design, or are not part of some minimalist gimmick designed to overcharge you for less, check out Vincero. And you can use my promo code GOODSPORTS or my link in the description for a discount on your order. Good sports, link, save some money at Vincero. First, we've got the Orlando Apollos dismantling the Atlanta Legends 40 to six. A simple question, what is the difference between a god and a legend? Or as Kanye would say, what's a god to a king? Well, about 34 points based on what we saw in this game. So what is a god to a non-believer? Because the non-believers are now Legends fans. The Legends were a disgrace to the city of Atlanta, the city of champions. Yes, that's champions plural. The Braves, of course, have won. The Atlanta MLS team won this last year. And the Falcons, at least, have 328 of a Super Bowl win. Now the only record the legends can pridefully don in the AAF Hall of Fame one day is that my all-time favorite kicker, Young Ho Koo, scored the first points in AAF history. Which was cool, until you realize that almost everything that happened this last weekend was a first in AAF history. The legends were so bad, they couldn't even capitalize off of one of the worst muffed punts I've ever seen. Either AAF players wear cups, or that ball ricocheted off the returner's erection. You think he pretended to be hurt here? No, that's a ball-on-ball -ball crime. Apollo's quarterback, Sarah Gilbert, became the first player to throw and catch a touchdown in an AAF game. I knew he'd succeed without Roseanne. Gilbert is now the big dick Nick of the AAF. The Atlanta Legends played so poorly, John Legend decided to sue them for defamation of character and announced that at last night's Grammys. I can't tell if the Apollos are the team to beat or if Atlanta is just the equivalent of the Arizona Cardinals and the AAF. Legends QB Matt Sims was terrible in this game. 126 passing yards and two interceptions. He played so poorly that for the first time ever, I actually wanted to hear Phil Sims talk about a quarterback. I hate to say this GM, but I'd trade my kid for Chad Kelly right now. Not just on the field, but for family dinner, holidays, and father-son shower time. I do like Apollo's wide receiver, Ishmael Hyman. He's the first Hyman in human history to do the breaking. 
Both teams muffed punts in this game and the Apollos finished their dominant performance with a 51 yard pick six on this shitty screen pass. I'm sorry, Matt Sims, but if you can't throw a screen pass, you shouldn't be playing football in any league. Mike Vick should be quarterbacking the legends. He was at one point the offensive coordinator, but that changed when Brad Childress suddenly resigned after remembering he was a bad coach. I think I'm gonna give Terrence Garvin the Big Dick Player Award for his two interception performance. He sealed the deal with his 51 yard pick six that matched his jersey number. Also, quarterback Garrett Gilbert gets the Big Dick Player Award for his two passing touchdowns, a two point conversion and a receiving touchdown. San Diego Fleet lose to the San Antonio Commanders 15 to six in a game that featured three interceptions and zero touchdown passes. The Alliance of American Football is allowing quarterbacks to be hit, possibly decapitated, again, like this play where fleet QB Mike Berkovici got sent to the fourth dimension on a strong side blitz from the linebacker. You know it's a, a big hit when you think the quarterback fumbled two balls and then realize one is his helmet? and then wonder if his head is still inside the helmet. Fleet QB, Mike Berkovici, is a very, very poor man's version of Jimmy G, Jimmy Garoppolo. They're both Italian, both handsome, but Jimmy G signed a $137.5 million deal. Berkovici will need three years to earn 275K, making him attractive to zero porn stars but does leave the door open if he wants to date male porn stars. A man on a man. The only big flaw from this game I noticed was uh, with the hot mic, CBS had to cut sound over and over again because football players are constantly fucking swearing. And he's got a gaping hole. And if Hard Knocks has taught me anything, it's that you can't expect football players to not swear. They swear like sailors in a Quentin Tarantino movie which would actually be a really good movie. The other issue I noticed was the AAF streaming service on their app did not work. I tried to watch from my phone and this is what I got. It was a live feed from hours before the game and I have no clue what the hell this animated version of the game is. It looks and feels like a boring match of Tecmo. Besides that big hit, the first half of this game was exactly as entertaining as the Super Bowl and I will chalk that up as a win for the AAF. Now, if you can clean up the mistakes, Logan Woodside might be a decent quarterback for the Commanders. Uh, Brickovici was replaced by Philip Nelson in head coach Mike Mart's first big in-game adjustment, but that didn't stop the Commanders from finishing the game with six sacks and a couple picks. The final, an interception by Zach Sanchez in the end zone. It's almost like we mentioned Zach Sanchez in our preview episode here. It was almost like I mentioned Orion Stewart in the preview episode as well, who also had a big pick early in this game. What I noticed is the commanders need to learn to finish drives. Woodside's worst throw was this pick in the end zone, reminiscent of Kyle Orton, great between the 20s, terrible in the red zone. They should have scored more than 15 points in this game with their trio of ball catchers, Mikhail McKay, Alonzo Moore, and Greg Ward with 80, 78, and 65 yards receiving, including one NFL-worthy catch by Ward down the sideline. I think San Antonio has a legit defense, and obviously Sean Sackmaster Washington is getting a big dig. <laughs> On to Sunday's games. Memphis Express, zero points. Birmingham Iron, 26 points. Thank you. Thank you, Memphis, for becoming the first team ever shut out in the AAF. I knew I was going to hate you, and you proved me right by being terrible. I made fun of most teams' uh, names and logos in my last video, uh, but you're still the only team with the truly uninspiring name, Memphis Express. The crazy thing is, if you do get a job at, say, FedEx in Memphis, you'll probably earn more than the AAF players. Now, this game proved that Christian Hackenberg is Christian Hackenberg no matter what league you put him in. He probably throws bullets over his uncle's head when they play football in the backyard on Thanksgiving. 87 yards, one pick, zero points and a whole bunch of fucks. You can hear him. <laughs> giving him the dirtiest mouth of any Christian I've ever heard. The only player he made jealous with his uh, 3.8 yards per attempt was running back Trent Richardson. Richardson had the most Trent Richardson stat line ever. 23 carries, 58 yards, one fumble, two touchdowns. 
He's already in mid-season form, and I'm convinced that Richardson is trying to get the elusive one-to-one carry-to-yard ratio in every game. He's not a bad running back, he just has OCD. Former Rams quarterback and current Iron quarterback Luis Perez looked as good as any of the QBs this weekend. Out of all of the passers in this league, he probably has the best chance of making it back to the NFL by the start of next season. Good for him, bad for Birmingham. Uh, Also bad for the bowling community because Perez gave up pro bowling to be a quarterback. Just like when I gave up law and medical school to start a YouTube channel. I was on track to become the first doctor to be able to file a lawsuit against you while inspecting your colon for polyps. A family dream I never, I never lived up to. The city of Birmingham also said they want the Raiders to play their home games at Legion Field, where the Iron play. I don't know if the Raiders will go for that, because like in Levi Stadium, I don't think they want to play somewhere where they're only the second best football team. Iron wide receiver Quentin Patton uh, gets the Big Dick Player Award for being one of two receivers over the weekend to break the 100-yard receiving mark. And defensive back Jamar Summers, who seemed to be everywhere on the field, gets a Big Dick Player Award, three passes defended, an interception, a forced fumble. The final game of the weekend, Salt Lake Stallions fall to the Arizona Hot Shots 38-22. The difference I noticed in this game was that Arizona's defense has playmakers. Both the Stallions and Hot Shots proved they could move the ball effectively on offense, but the Stallions' defense never seemed to be able to make a play or stop a drive. Also, Arizona's quarterback seems pretty athletic. He looks fast, and if I'm AZ, I'd get him running the ball more. I said Luis Perez, is it Luis or Luis? Looks like the best passer, but I think John Walford, is it Walford or Wolford? We'll finish the season with the best stats. And since Game of Thrones is on my mind every day right now, I will call him John the Wolf. One thing that surprised me from the gameplay over the weekend was that there was very little running from the quarterbacks, especially considering the O-lines were about as effective as a are you 18 checkpoint on a porn site. The Stallions might be a decent team, but mistakes cost them this game. It was tied eight to eight, Arizona punts, and then the Stallions muff which was immediately followed by a big touchdown pass to Rashad Ross. One of the most exciting offensive plays of the game at that point. And the John Wolf to Ross connection might be the most exciting in the league right now. The Hot Shots also have a wide receiver named Bundy. So when the coaches watch film of this game this week, they can say, we're watching the Bundy tapes. Stallions quarterback Josh Woodrum got hurt uh, on this goal line run. So I guess his name isn't as manly as I predicted. Trevor Knight ended up being a backup for Arizona, and the Hot Shots name is a reference to Arizona firefighters. So I was basically wrong about everything I said when I discussed these two teams. Matt Linehan replaced whoever I said was the Stallions quarterback. Uh, The nice thing about the AAF is there's not much difference between a backup and a starting QB. They're all failed backups. I I just can't wait until Nathan Peterman and Paxton Lynch are playing in the AAF Bowl. I do need to give John the Wolf a Big Dick Player Award for throwing four touchdowns in his debut, and Arizona wide receiver Rashad Ross earned one with his 100-plus yard performance, and defensive hotshots linebacker Steven Johnson, former Broncos linebacker appropriately named Johnson, gets the Big Dick Player Award. Seven tackles and a pick. The craziest part about this weekend is that the AAF was a big success, and only one of these games were somewhat close. Maybe we're still hurt by the Super Bowl, and we'll take any kind of football that we can get right now, but I do actually think that this was a pretty good product and I'm still curious, if nothing else, to see which players get back into the NFL and see how the AAF expands and grows if their success continues. The test will be to see if the ratings increase this weekend now that the mystery or curiosity factor is gone. Per Darren Ravel, the AAF beat out head-to-head competition, Rockets versus Thunder, in ratings. Maybe that's just a temporary thing. Or maybe people really do like watching any kind of football better than James Harden taking 50 shots and holding onto the ball for 36 of 48 minutes. I'll be back Thursday this week with an official AAF prediction episode. Thanks for watching another episode of That's Good Sports, AAF football. Subscribe here on YouTube. Also give my friend at WillKey6 a follow on Twitter. He is helping me write 
all AAF football videos. I'm on Twitter, Instagram, at Brandon Perna. Thank you for everyone who watched my first AAF video this week. There was a lot of people who did, and I did not expect that.